So welcome back to the Bonferroni channel and today I'm going to show you how I rebuilt my starter motor on a 2002 Honda CRV. Hopefully this video will show you how to do it. Also maybe help you decide if you want to do it or not, whether it's worth your time. So um, I'm not going to show you how to take it out of the car. I'm going to include a link to a video that shows you how to do that. Um, basically it requires a lot of labor to get to. You have to pull off the intake manifold and really dig. So should you replace or rebuild the motor and how do you know it's the motor it's a problem to definitively test it you have to get to the motor you have to access it which is anywhere from an hour to three hours of labor depending on how clever you are um, I had a pretty good idea with the motor because a fully charged battery turn the key I would intermittently have starting problems and then um, when I when it would not start the battery would make a, or the uh, motor would make a brief clunk sound when I turned it over and then be silent. So um, that's consistent with starter motors that are pretty worn in terms of the brushes and carbon builds up. Um, once I pulled this, um, I bench tested it and it was, it would occasionally work, it was very sluggish um, to do that. Well, I'll just show you in, in a separate clip. Um, and then I tore it open. You definitely want to have a vacuum on hand because there's going to be a ton of black soot, the carbon that falls out. Um, and I chose to rebuild it. So here's your options. A $25 rebuild kit on eBay, free shipping. Um, what do you have to lose? That's how I approached it. I didn't have an immediate uh, turnaround required for this. This is my personal car and I have another form of transportation. And my thought was if I ordered the part before I worked on it, I could always get a rebuilt starter from the auto parts store for about 200 to 250 if it didn't work out. Um, the other option would be to buy a $700 brand new unit from Honda or take it to a mechanic and have him put in a Honda unit or have him put in a rebuilt unit which is going to cost probably I don't know 500 to over a thousand dollars depending on which route you take and for me I decided I was going to tear in, do it myself, maybe use a rebuilt motor um, but try to rebuild it myself. So here's how I did it. So to test the starter, um, you will hook some jumper cables to a fresh battery, um, fully charged, just like you normally would on one side, and then you'll put the positive clamp to here, and the negative you'll clamp it to the body here, because that's where the ground comes out into the engine. Um, and then you'll take a jumper wire, a small one, attach it here, and touch the other end to a 12 volt source. And what you should see is you should see this come out and spin. So if it's really sluggish or inconsistent doing that, um, that'd be an indication the start motor is pretty well worn. Okay, so with an eight millimeter wrench, um, you pull these two bolts out of the back, pull this out. This has a strong magnet in it, so don't set it on your computer. And here is the brush holder. So you may be able to see it or not, but the positive side of the brushes, the two positive brushes, are worn all the way down to the bare wire. Um, what we need to do is replace this portion. So here is the Chinese Rebuild brush kit. Um, it will replace this entire top plate. Um, I'm going to reuse the nut. The trick to this is going to be getting this um, uh, push nut, this retainer, off of here without breaking this plastic rod. Now the rebuild kit comes with a new plastic rod, but I'm guessing the quality is going to be much higher with the Japanese part versus the Chinese part. So this is spring-loaded. You can lift it and turn it and see the planetary gears down below. Uh, so I'm going to dremel off this little retainer. And then the new kit comes with a new retainer. This will slip right on. Um, and I'll check the contacts. That is, this surface, these surfaces in here, um, because that's what the solenoid pulls a little metal washer across to bridge these two gaps. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure these are fitting correctly. Um, and then set this armature, which I've already cleaned. Oh, by the way, when you do this, you're going to want a vacuum ready because you're going to have a ton of carbon dust fall out. Um, so I will sit this in there. Now I'll just snap off that tab and it should fall right off.
Okay, here's that shaft rafter to replace. I'd intended on just using the factor one, but the push nuts didn't fit the uh, replacement push nut, and I got a, some push nuts at the hardware store, but they didn't fit either. So, um, in order to get to this, um, this will be sunk down in here. On top of that, you'll have the uh, planetary gears. You pull each one of these off, slowly lift this out, and then you have this, which is press fit. It has a sort of an insulator around it. And to undo the press fit, what you have to do, or what I did, was I took a Allen wrench from Vice Grips and put it through these screw holes and just went from side to side and slowly, lightly pulling if it hooked in there and it slowly eased out. And as you see, um, actually I don't know how well you can see that, but um, there's an, a metal area back here you can pull on without cracking the plastic. And so you want the head or the uh, tip of the Allen wrench to be facing towards this like hollowed out looking section on both sides. So I'll go in this way and just a light pull, this way pull, and not really a light pull, a firm pull, but just tiny increments on either side. And then you can get a screwdriver and lightly push a little here and lightly push a little back here and slowly it works out, it pulls out, under it you'll find this, and then the, um, the shaft for the uh, final output, and you have three springs, you need to make sure they sit in your little holes. So, I'm going to snap this off and put the replacement on and then reassemble. We're going to be real careful when we push that back into place too. Let's press back in. Um, the brushes are in their rearmost position, the springs are sort of staged up above, they're not in place yet, and I'm going to put the the um, core of the motor back in and get the commentator and the brushes lined up. Before I do that, I'm going to get the context the contacts set up on here. Um, again, waffle pattern down towards the contacts. Then I'll put my spring on here. Should I use the new or the old spring? Hmm. Height. I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna go with the old spring. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put the um, push nut that came with the rebuild kit. And this will will not fit the original um, shaft here, but it will fit the one from the rebuild kit. See it on there correctly. Make sure I can't easily pull it off. Okay. Now, set this upright. Make sure the brushes are pushed all the way back. Set the um, commutator end in there in between the brushes. And if it doesn't want to slip into place, I might have to go around and make sure I push the brushes all the way back. Seems like it's going to be kind of a tight fit here. Brushes have a lot of life left in them. Perfect. Now, if you can see the brushes, the um, springs are still up here. I'm going to push them down into place with a screwdriver and make sure they're all the way down there. They're not binding up on anything. I'm going to repeat and then I'm going to make sure there's spring tension in all the brushes. dust cover on here and this is gonna go this way and this is gonna keep this all nice and fresh so I gotta make sure I get it on there well 
all the way around. Okay. Now I'm going to lower this housing down onto here. Um, I'm going to keep downward pressure on this because the magnet's going to try to pull it out. So um, that's how I'm going to approach it. So downward pressure. I pull the magnet pulling. I just slowly guide it into place. There we go. Put the end cap on here. To do that, I need to figure out which way to line up the holes. I'll find the holes on the front. Okay, got it all hooked up. Got the jumper wire. I jump it and let's see if that does what it's supposed to do. Looks like it's working.